And, uh, I'd like to begin by uh, um, thanking Wilhelm for the kind invitation and the Institute for um, the hospitality. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, jo some joint work with uh, Pedro Duarte from the University of Lisbon. Um, the goal, my goal for this talk is to um, describe and motivate a more general program we have in, say, ergodic theory, namely um, uh, establishing certain types of uh, limit theorems for multiplicative processes. Now, before getting to the slides and describing this more general program, I want to, to present um, a, simpler, a simpler model. I'm going to refer to it as the uh, general Bernoulli model. which is really at the, at the beginning of the theory that we are trying to, to, to develop. But even though it's at the beginning of the theory, it's still not completely understood. So um, let me start by choosing some uh, matrices, G1, GK, in the general linear group, M by M. And, um, probabilities P1, Pk, so given that uh, uh, we consider the, um, a sequence of uh, independent identically distributed random matrices Let me call it MJ, where you pick the, the matrix MJ from amongst these matrices GI with the probability PI, right? So this, this uh, generates a multiplicative process. Let me denote it by uh, pi N. And um, there are, of course, um, uh, analogs of the law of large numbers uh, for this multiplicative process. One example of, uh, of such analog is uh, this furstenberg keston theorem that says that a certain average of, uh, of this process, so you take the, the norm of this product of n, mat n matrices and uh, the nth root of it converges almost surely to a number. So let me take the log of it. This converges almost surely to a number. I'm going to call it L, which is called the maximal uh, Lyapunov exponent. They don't have to be. Eventually, they will. But at first, they don't have to be. So this is the Lyapunov exponent of the process. And well, in particular, this is that the probability that uh, of the tail event that this differs by the, from the limit by more than epsilon, so goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So this, this suggests. Um, Two questions, two natural questions that I'd like to say for la later. Assume something about the, the risk enclosure of the support. I mean, you, know what, you want these ends to be, say something more serious, you want these ends to uh, somehow not know about each other. Eventually, I would like to get rid of any. Yes, eventually, I would like to get rid exactly of these uh, yeah. assumptions. At first, for, the, for Furstenberg's theory to, to hold, yes, you one, one, one makes those assumptions. But for the problems that I would like to formulate, that's the, actually the goal, to get rid of those. You're not going to assume that on, on exterior powers. 
Yes, yes. Well, as I said, I will settle for the, the two-dimensional setting, in which case that's not necessary. But yes, if you want to go to, to higher dimensions, you'll, you'll have to make assumptions on, high, on exterior powers. OK. So let me just, just formulate the, the two, two, two problems related to this. One, one is, can this convergence me, be made more precise? Um, in other words, is there a large deviation principle for this multiplicative process? So can the convergence be made more precise? So large deviations, this is the, are there large deviations? This is one question. And another question is, so let's see what, the, um, what this uh, uh, limit depends on. Uh, it's a function that given, uh, well, it's a quantity that depends on the data. So in our case, the data consists of these matrices G1, GK, and then the probability vector P1, PK. We can make this a bit more general. So. So what's here, what, what the data gives us, it's a, it's a measure mu, a probability measure mu on the gen general linear group, which has, come, uh, which has finite support. And one could generalize this to, to any compactly supported measure as well, right? So, um, so this depends on, on, the, on the measure. So the second question we have is, uh, What's the dependence on the, on the measure? Of L on the data. Sometimes of continuity at first. So uh, in other words, if you, if you, um, if you work with the, the first, the more basic example, how does this? the regularity of this function. Or more generally, if you, if you allow more general measures, the regularity of this. And now, of course, one could ask about the regularity of this uh, jointly, or um, you can freeze some of the parameters. If you freeze the support, well, it's known by, by work of uh, Yuval Perez that this is analytic in the, in the probability vector, if you freeze this, then up the, the, the regularity is holder. This is the optimal result, unless you make further assumptions on the. OK, so this is the, this is, um, these are the, the questions that I would like to, to ask. And uh, let me give you some uh, two, two basic examples of where, uh, where such processes appear. And uh, how can these uh, questions be answered in those particular uh, instances in those particular examples. So the first uh, example, it's, it's very well known, is the Anderson tight binding model. So you have the, the Schrodinger operator, the discrete one-dimensional Schrodinger un operator acting on the, on the one-dimensional uh, on the integer lattice. Let me write it as a matrix. So I have um, IID random variables with common distribution mu. And we assume that the support has, it, has more than one point. So the operator is uh, um, in matrix form has one, uh, well, this three diagonal with this IID sequence on the, on the diagonal and once above and below. If you consider the, 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 the discrete Schrodinger equation and you solve it formally, the transfer matrices that appear in the, in, the, in the formal solution to this are obtained as products of this kind where the matrices Mj, well, they depend on the, on the energy. And they are 2 by 2. They are SL2R matrices, right? So you get, you get a one-parameter family 
of, uh, of, um, of such processes. And then the, 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 the questions, these questions, uh, say, say the second, can be reformulated as how does the Lyapunov exponent, the maximum Lyapunov exponent, depends on everything else is fixed, so it's the energy department, uh, the, the, sorry, it's the energy uh, parameter that varies, right? So the question is how, how, how does this um, uh, function behave as a, fun as, as a function of the energy? And because of, uh, of the properties that were me mentioned earlier, it's known, so this is known by classical, I think 89, that this is a Hölder continuous function. And that's because th th this is actually the, the result of Lepage is much more general than this um, under certain assumptions. So perhaps I should, I, as I said, I refer to this setup here as the general Bernoulli model. If this general Bernoulli model satisfies some generic um, irreducibility assumptions and contraction, uh, then we have this type of modulus of continuity. And the, um, the process that we have here, it's special. It's, it's a, we call this a Schrodinger co-cycle. And automatically, the, this assumption ensures those, uh, those conditions, the irreducibility and contraction, automatically. So that's why we have, uh, we have this Hölder continuity. In general, we could have better modulus of continuity depending on, your, on, the, on the measure. OK, so this is one, uh, this is one uh, example that is well understood. However, let me, let me give you another one. Well, I can erase this, which It's, um, it's much trickier. So this comes from Günther Stoltz. And it's uh, related to a paper he wrote with uh, his former student, uh, um, Jacob Chapman. And um, so what they consider, it's, uh, it's a Jacobi operator. Well, this is a baby model of their, their theory. Um, so let theta j be a scalar um, IID process with common probability distribution mu whose support is away from zero. And so what they consider is, the, is a Jacobi operator of the following form. On the diagonal, so I, I write it again in this. Uh, infinite matrix form. On the diagonal, you put zeros. And it's, it's symmetric. Uh, it's self-adjoint. So I, I, I'll have zeros here. And you, you have this uh, IID process alternating with a constant. So you put theta minus 1, 0, theta 1, and so on. Okay. If you write the again, the eigenvalue equation. And you do the, you, you, you solve this formally. The, the, mate, the, the transfer matrices are obtained as a, as a multiplicative process where what you get, the, 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 the matrices that you, you multiply are going to have the following form. And well, don't check my calculations because they are probably wrong up to a sign. But there is something of this form. Um, so this is the this is the process that you have. You can ask the same questions as um, as there about this uh, about the Lyapunov exponent of this process as a function of the energy, or about the the. Um, um, statistical properties of. Uh, Sorry. Yes. The way you the operator does not depend on theta zero. So. Ah, no, it is. Sorry. Oh. Well. And then, uh, what did I put? I put a zero. I meant a one here. Theta one, theta and zero. then a one, and then a theta oh, one. Yes, on the diagonal, yes. On the diagonal, you have zeros. Yeah. And off the diagonal, you have uh, an alternation between these and ones. Yes, this is what, what you get. And one or? 
and one. one. Okay. Yes, one. So this yes. is like a nearest neighbor where the first guy is speaking the same thing. Yes. Yes. And this is actually what, what they are actually, this was a, a baby model of something which leads to a four by four. Um, yes, but uh, so this is not the most realistic model that they had in mind, but it's a start. And OK, so one question is, and, and, and let me maybe uh, uh, mention this, uh, uh, although, maybe pe although many people in the audience know this already, these types of questions, why is, what's the, okay, what's the modulus, is there a modulus of continuity for this function, for the Lyapunov exponent? This is relevant in, uh, in multiscale analysis. So their goal was to get localization for this type of, of operator for all energies. And they, they do this through a multiscale analysis that requires knowing that the integrated density of states is Hölder continuous or close to that. And the, the problem they have is that everything works except at energy zero. Because what happens at energy zero, the, um, the process that you get is, is diagonal. So I mentioned this, but I didn't define this explicitly. Uh, this, the, the, the general r result of Lepage, as well as the, the, the Furstenberg's theory, re they, they rely on these assumptions, on these generic assumptions uh, called um, um, irreducibility, which means, well, there are different types of irreducibility. But in principle, what it means is that there are no invariant subspaces for all the all the matrices that uh, that define this uh, for the support of the of the of the measure. While here, well, we have two invariant uh, uh, subspaces. So this is the most reducible situation. So this is a question that they they asked um, they asked several people a, a few years back, three four years ago, and um, and um, um, as of well, this year, let me tell you what, uh, what we can. So the, 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 the previous uh, theory does not apply uh, because of this lack of, uh, of, of uh, so reducibility. Zero, you get a policy without yes, and yes, and fine. yes. Yeah, well, there are lots of examples where that happens, you know, yes. uh, in even in Schrodinger, where you just make the potential zero on an even, even lattice and, and, and random on the odd. Okay. Well, in this case, the 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 conclusion. Uh, you you know it is positive because you assume that uh, you assume that this measure gives you uh, you you assume. Yeah, in my it's case, not a in my case, it's yeah. State. In my case, it's an extended state, but every, but but you have localization nevertheless because all, almost every yeah you, know, you have nothing but point spectrum. Yes. Your yes. Origin, your localization length just blows up. Yes. Hasn't Goldschild and Mobulus have some general theorem about the Zariski closure of the support? I think mean, Goldschild needed goal. it for some mm -hmm. reason, and, and then they proved some general theorem. In the end. But it will not apply here. This will escape. This will escape the yeah, their, theorem. their their theorem exactly. Mm -hmm. So the, the this is the goal of the of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the. The, the, the goal of uh, several teams at, at IMPA in Brazil and on, 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 uh, on the other hand of, uh, of Duarte and I to get rid of these, uh, of these assumptions yes. and obtain, obtain uh, a modulus of continuity of the Lyapunov exponent without, without those assumptions and possibly applications to, to, to problems in mathematical physics, if, uh, for example, at this one. And uh, so let me. Well, no, for this, <laughs> okay. No, no, I can give you two matrices in SL2Z. I don't commute, and I say, I mean, you know some miracle examples which compute or in closed form or in terms of known functions. Um. I have some examples where I'd love to know the answer. There's this book by Diana, and it's the first chapter in the Eclipse by Eclipse, he concluded that. Where he computes it? Yes.
yes. <laughs> but no, no, no. But th those are <laughs> they are honest, ex honest examples for students. Yeah, so yeah, yes. Okay, yes. So non-trivial, no. I don't know how to compute non-trivial uh, Lyapunov exponents. Um, okay. So let me let me say that uh, uh, perhaps I should I should. Uh, just formulate this that um, I don't need the Anderson model anymore, but um, well, in the to simplify matters, let me consider the the Bernoulli in the SL2R setting or GL2R if you want. Right, so the two by two. Do, uh, eventually, I made it to the to the SL2R setting. Um, so, and the question is the de the the dependence of the of the Lyapunov exponent on the on the measure, right? Or if you want, if the measure has has a finite support on the um, support of the measure. So this. This problem was uh, was studied by Boker and Viana in 2010, where they got the continuity of this function without the modulus of continuity, and then later was revisited by Avila, Eskin, and Viana um, a few years later. They proved the same result in dimension 2, so for GL2 matrices, and announce the result for higher dimensions. So, uh, so this result, it's, and it's a completely different mo method. The topology of the space dimensions? Uh, if you, if, OK, in the, well, in that, it's, it's clear. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to, to, to take the weak star, the weak star topology. Yes. And uh, so then the question became, this is, Mere continuity is not that helpful if you want to uh, get continuity of the, I mean, a modulus of continuity for the integrated density of states for, for multi scale analysis. So then the question was is there a modulus of continuity? So, regarding a modulus of continuity, there is work in progress close to, to be f um, finished by um, uh, Viana with uh, his student uh, Yaya Toll. This is actually the subject of an ongoing uh, summer course at IMPA and uh, of Duarte and myself. Um, but using different methods and the results are not exactly of the same nature. Um, let me just say that uh, um, in our case, so I, I formulated two problems there. And I want, the, for the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on slides. For the, for the rest of my talk, I want to, to, uh, to formulate these questions in a more general setting and relate them. Yes? Question. Do you assume that the distribution has a density? Ah, no, no. If you do, then it's, uh, it's smooth by Lepage. Yes. Yes, the, yes. Well, they, they, we do so far assume just uh, we, we are looking at sum of point masses. Yes, they can handle more uh, just any uh, any completely supported, but the, the the result is weaker in another sense. Um, and also, I forgot to say that you can think of of the same type of model, but with the Markov process, right? Um, instead of Bernoulli. So. As, as I said, uh, as I was trying to, uh, beginning to say, there is a relation between these two problems. And this is what I'm, tr I, I'm going to focus on the, the rest of the talk. Um, there is a way to, to um, real if, if the answer to, to the, the first problem is, is, uh, is good enough, then this implies an answer to the second. Um, so let me explain this and generalize this. Okay, and for this, I want to I want to to rephrase everything in a much more uh, abs uh, general setting. So I'll just uh, quickly say what a linear cycle is. 
So suppose you have an, an ergodic system, a base ergodic system, and a measurable matrix valued function. They determine a new dynamical system, a skew product map on the, on the um, bundle space, on the bundle X cross RM. On the base, you just let the, the base transformation T act. And on the fiber, you have a linear transformation induced by the matrix valued function A. Right? So this is a new, a new dynamical system. As you iterate it on the base, R, you have the iterations of, of the base transformation. And on the fiber, you get a linear map induced by a product of, of matrices. Right? So you have a, a multiplicative uh, uh, process on the, on the fiber. We usually fix the, the, the base dynamics. So when I say co-cycle, I, I will mean just the, f the, the measurable, uh, the, the, the matrix valued function A. OK, so I'll give you some basic examples. All of what I said before can be formulated in this language of linear co-cycles. If you take your base dynamics to be the Bernoulli shift over a space of symbols, in my example here, well, I erase, but the space of symbols is finite. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so if you consider as a base dynamics the, sorry, I, uh, the, um, the Bernoulli shift and the, um, the fiber action, if you choose it to be locally constant, constant on cylinders, depending on only one coordinate, this is a way to encode multiplying uh, uh, a sequence of, um, of IID matrices, right? Uh, when you iterate, when you iterate this, the, this, this depends on the zeroth coordinate. When you multiply with uh, A of Tx, this will depend on the first coordinate and so on, OK? Related to this, you can consider Markov co-cycles where the base dynamics is the, is the measure there is a Markov measure instead of a Bernoulli measure. OK, at the other end of um, of the range of ergodic behavior, you have the quasi-periodic co-cycles, where on the base you have a torus translation, ergodic torus translation. And on the fiber, you, well, you have um, a, a function, matrix value, that you assume that it's, well, you have to assume in general that it's very regular, analytic, uh, for convenience, at least for convenience. And of course, there are many other examples. You can take the doubling map. You can take a hyperbolic toral automorphism on the base. You can take um, a skew shift or, or, or many other types of, of uh, examples, although they are not as well understood as the previous ones. OK, now, so this is, this is from the point of view of the base dynamics. From the point of view of the structure on the, of the fiber map, uh, well, I already mentioned the, the Schrodinger co-cycle corresponding to a, to a discrete Schrodinger operator. Um, and you can define it over any base dynamic as well. right? You, uh, um, and um, so this gives you a, a two by two uh, linear cost cycle. Um, of course, the, the, the higher dimension Schrodinger uh, operator, for, for, for that, you don't have a transfer matrix formalism. But you can think of certain approximations of the higher dimensional operator, like um, um, a band lattice operator. Right? You have the integer lattice times a finite set. And uh, then when you write the Schrodinger equation, you get a, a cost cycle which is higher dimensional. So the higher dimensional. Um, with yes, with, a, with an additional symplectic structure, yes. Yes. And also, if you, instead of a Schrodinger co-cycle, you consider a more general finite differences uh, operator. Uh, um, uh, if instead of a Schrodinger operator, you take a Jacobi operator, then uh, you end up with a much uh, more general type of, of linear co-cycle. OK, well, so for an m by m co-cycle, you have m Lyapunov of exponents that correspond to this exponential, almost sure exponential uh, um, rate of uh, um, convergence of other quantities related to the, to the iterates of the co-cycle. So if you consider the norm of the nth iteration, you get the maximum Lyapunov of exponent. If you look at the other singular values, then you consider the other Lyapunov of exponents. 
Uh, I'm going to, there is, well, it was already mentioned, there is uh, an algebraic formula considering uh, um, exterior powers that in most cases reduce the study of all the exponents to the study of the first one, uh, of, the, of the maximum Lyapunov exponent, or to the study of the first two. Um, what else should I touch to? I think, no. It might be my... Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, no, no problem. Okay, so uh, so I'll um, said that sometimes it's in general it's in to to study the the exponents it's enough to understand the the the, the top one or the relationship between the the first two. Um, so to simplify notations, I am going to refer only to the maximum Lyapunov exponent and drop all the sub-indices and just call it L. Um, OK, uh, so what I want to, to, to formulate is what I said in the, in the, in the title. Uh, I said uh, uh, concentration inequalities for uh, iterates of linear cocycles. In other words, we want to understand in a more quantitative um, way the convergence of those geometric averages to the, to the Lyapunov exponent. This, um, so to do this, let me make an analogy to, to classical probabilities first. And um, I'm going to, uh, to compare two, two classical uh, uh, results in, uh, in, in, in probabilities, the large deviation principle of Kramer and, and Höfting's inequality. So now we just have a, a, a scalar IID um, uh, process um, and um, the question is how do the, the tail events behave? The, the tail event being the, the, the event that the um, average process differs from the expected value by more than epsilon. So under certain assumptions, the large deviation principle of Kramer says that asymptotically this uh, the tail events decay exponentially with a precise uh, rate function. Hövding's inequality is, um, it's in some sense, a weaker statement, but it's more precise because it's, um, it's more useful because it's finitary. So Hövding's inequality says that the, the, the probability of tail events is at most exponential, but the process may as well be finite. And the measurements that appear here are very closely, are, are, are very um, explicit in terms of the almost sure um, bound on the, on the process, if the process is bounded. What I want to say is that, and this, will, this is important in what I'm going to discuss later, the difference between these two is that for us, this is a more useful statement or the, 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 the idea behind it, because it's uniform in the sense that as you perturb the process in the uniform norm, the estimates don't change much, and it's not asymptotical, it's, it's quantitative, it's finite or finitary. So um, the question is, uh, it's a natural, it's a natural um, uh, topic in ergodic theory to look for analogs of, uh, of uh, limit theorems from probabilities in dynamical systems, right? Uh, wh what do I mean by this? Consider uh, an ergodic system, consider an, a nice enough observable, then this determines um, a stationary process um, by composing the observable with the iterates of the system. The question is the corresponding sum process, which is the which are the ergodic sums, do they satisfy uh, statistical properties as in, under what assumptions they satisfy statistical properties like large deviation, central limit, and things like this. And um, I, I don't know much about it, but this is well studied uh, by people like uh, Lysan Young, um, 
um, Arthur Lopes and, uh, and others. Um, so they studied the um, statements in the spirit of the, of the large deviation principle of Kramer. And um, statements in the spirit of, of Hövding also exist. Uh, so let me just mention a, a result of Chazot and Guezel that prove that a concentration of, of measure inequality holds for dynamical, uh, for ergodic systems under the following assumptions. I'm, I'm not going to define what, uh, what a dynamical system modeled by a Young Tower is, but let me just say it's a system that has, that has hyperbolicity, has enough hyperbolicity in it. Okay, so in some sense it's close enough to the to the um, to the IID to the IID setting. It needs yeah. to be uniformly No, no, it doesn't have to be. But it has to be. Well, there is a certain type of tower construction over a base that is uniformly hyperbolic, and there is a return map to the to that base, easy which to which. Easy to verify that. Like if you say, take uh, geodesic flow and a negative For example, I think she used it to do uh, to do the math of one minus a x squared. You get some strong mixing. For that. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. This 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 would be I think one. Yeah. This would be one uh, one example that that I, I believe that. fits the theory. Yeah. Yes. Um, Okay, so under 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 such assumptions on the base and on uh, and assuming that the observable it's Lipschitz or you, you, if you change the the, um, the the distance you can also assume it's Hölder, you have the equivalent of Hövding in 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 the setting um, where you see it's by equivalent of of Hövding I mean very explicit it's a finite uh, statement with very explicit constants. They depend on the Lipschitz norm of the of the observable. So this is this is closer to to the um, um, IID setting, right? To the Bernoulli model. Surprisingly, at the other end of the um, of the ergodic world, in the in the quasi-periodic setting, statements of this kind uh, also hold. So uh, provided. So I'm talking about the, the, the torus translation pro provided that you have a, you have a diophantine uh, condition on the, on, the, on the translation. And um, these types of results were, were obtained by Burgan, Goldstein, and, uh, and Wilhelm, and some variations of this by uh, Duarte and myself. <coughs> Uh, there is an assumption on the observable that it's, it may not, it, it doesn't appear too natural here, but, but there, is a, there is a very good reason for, for it. Uh, so the observable is the restriction of a subharmonic function to the, to the torus. And, uh, and the estimates that appear here are, um, depend on some uniform measurements of this function, and, and I understand they are now being, uh, um, Right, they are being uh, uh, expressed in a much more precise way by um, by Rui Hein and and, uh, and Wilhelm in terms of the of this. Uh, but uh, does this, this uh, does this work for uh, uh, more than one frequency? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well. Yes. Yes. Some statements of this kind, perhaps not as precise. Not, you don't have an exponential decay, you get a sub-exponential decay. But uh, estimates of, in, of, this, of this kind do hold, and they are relevant in the study of the, well, you know that. Less or more. Can you write asymptotics or not? Precise asymptotics. Like the large, uh, I, I, I don't think so. No. Um, Okay, so so this is what's this is th these are examples of uh, of what's known for the base di uh, dynamic. But 
What I'm interested in is uh, it's the fiber. Uh, it's it's uh, such estimates for for uh, linear cost cycle, so for multiplicative uh, processes. So let me let me formulate the the uh, this this concept of concentration inequality for iterates of linear cost cycles. Again, you have a Bayes ergodic dynamical system. You have a a, a linear um, matrix valued function over it, you, you iterate the system, you have this multiplicative process, and the question is what happens with this event that the, um, this geometric averages differ from the limit or from, for, from their mean by more than epsilon. We want something quantitative. Uh, it would be ideal if it was an exponential decay, but sub-exponential or, or other types of decay are, are also uh, good to consider. And what's especially important, and, 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 and you'll see in a, in a moment why, for us is that these estimates depend in a uniform way on the data. In the sense that if you perturb this, this, um, the cost cycle in, an, in a certain space of cost cycles, a metric space of cost cycles, these constants that appear there don't blow up, right? Uh, and again, you, you want this to be to be f finitary, to, to hold for all for all iterations. Yeah, kind of yes. Like, right? Yes. 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 Uh, so, um, uh, so L n is the. Uh, sorry, I didn't. It's the is the integral of this, or you can replace it with the with the actual Lyapunov exponent. Um, yes. So I, I I'm going to refer to this as uniform LDT or large deviation type estimates. Um, OK, so the, 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 this is the, the general program on which we, we made very little progr uh, progress. But the, the, the general prog pro program we, we would like to, to, to propose is the following. Provide sufficient conditions, and sufficient and, and general enough conditions that such estimates, such statistical properties hold. Um, for Yes, that hold and hold under perturbation. Um, and uh, in other words, well, what I would expect is uh, that if the base dynamics is, is uh, nice enough as, for instance, is the case with, uh, with dynamical systems modeled by uh, Young Towers, if the cost cycle, is the fiber action is, uh, is regular enough, for instance, here it's uh, locally constant or analytic in the quasi-periodic case. And if the topology on the space of cost cycles is good enough, this is also relevant. Because if it's not good enough, for instance, in the quasi-periodic setting, you have discontinuities of, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. You cannot, have, you cannot have these types of uniform large deviations. So under such uh, appropriate assumptions on the, on, the, um, on the base dynamics, on the regularity, on the topology, we would like statistical properties for the iterates of the cost cycle, similar to, to the ones that hold already, are known already on the base or in classical probabilities. And surprisingly, not much is known um, on, on this. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier this, the, the, the point of to, to start would be the um, a locally constant cost cycle over a Bernoulli shift, right? This is the most, uh, the most natural place where they should hold. And, uh, and up until recently, without the generic uh, condition of, of irreducibility, these were not available. Now, um, Duarte and myself extend it with some loss. So we don't get an exponential decay. We get a sub-exponential decay. Uh, so we extended such results, but we are in in the setting of dimension two. And there is hope that we could go beyond dimension two if there is a certain structure to the symplectic structure, perhaps. But uh, this is, this is. Um, um, I mean, uh, the here instead of uh, exponential, you have n to some one half or something. Um, yes, yes, but it's not. Yeah, I can I can state it. It's not um, available yet, but but I can. Um, so 
so the so the setting is that of uh, SL to R valued cycles and it's uh, an easy extension to GL to R and uh, the um, the measure that we put on uh, here is uh, is has um, it's a sum of point masses and is fixed um, right so uh, the um, no irreducibility requirement no no so in this, in this, uh, so you consider the um, a function from. Well, another way to to phrase this. Let me let me phrase it this way. Another way to to to, to phrase this is uh, uh, consider the space of symbols to be to be finite, right? And put uh, a probability on it. And this we keep fixed. Although it's probably not difficult to allow it to vary, but, but we keep this fixed. And um, so we consider the, on the base the Bernoulli shift of, of uh, this. And then we consider the space of all functions from the space of symbols to, uh, to SL to R uh, with the um, L infinity distance, right? So this is the this gives you gives us a space of of cycles and uh, a metric space of cycles, right? So in this in this setting we have a uniform LDT estimate in the sense that uh, the probability that one over n log of the for any for any cycle that in this space the probability that this differs by more than of this tail event decays. Um, so let me put a constant here. There is some power b, which I don't know if uh, it's, it's, I think it's explicit, but it's 1 over something. It's an explicit power, but it's not 1, uh, unfortunately. And this holds for all n, right? So there is no assumption on the. Um, so this is, uh, okay, the power B is 1, can be 1 if the cycle is not diagonalizable. So the worst case is the diagonalizable. This is the most reducible. But uh, let me take advantage of, of this question to, to explain something. Uh, because to explain where the, why this is, uh, this is difficult and what do I mean by this uniformity. So by uniform, I mean, uh, again, if I, if I perturb this, the constants that appear there don't blow up. So le let's go back to this example. So I have a diagonal process, right? Of course, it satisfies all the, all the um, probabilistic statements you, you want. Because as you, as you multiply this and you take the norm and the log, it turns into an, an additive process. Right? And Höfding and all the other uh, statements hold automatically. If you are not diagonal or diagonalizable, then either the cycle, this is, this is a simple observation, that either the cycle itself or its inverse are not necessarily irreducible, but they satisfy some sort of irreducibility, which is good enough that previous work ensures um, these types of statistical properties. The problem is what happens when you perturb it. You have a, you have a large deviation for this, right? Uh, you have large deviations for the perturbations, but it's absolutely not obvious how to relate the parameters in the... Right? This relates to what people call special energies. I, I I don't know I don't know what what they are, but um, so so the, the the difficulty lies uh, precisely in uh, if if you are just satisfied with having some uh, um, uh, probabilistic statements they do hold already for in all cases if you want the stability of the of the estimates in the with respect to this perturbation 
this is a this is a very tricky problem and we managed to overcome it uh, overcome it in dimension two so far in this setting where the when the measure has finite support but will probably work better than that but let me I'm talking at the same time about two two different problems one is the this, the, this type of large deviation result, and the other is the modulus of continuity of the Lyapunov exponent. So I want to relate them. And um, well, um, we, the Duarte and I, um, um, a little while back, we devised a general approach to uh, establish a modulus of continuity for the Lyapunov exponents, provided we have, um, we have these types of uniform large deviation type estimates. So this approach was uh, uh, inspired. It, it was based upon ideas um, from this work of, uh, of Goldstein and, and Wilhelm, where they, they, they proved um, continuity of the Lyapunov exponents for quasi-periodic Schrodinger. Um, operators and co, co cycles. Um, their, their approach was an inductive approach based on the avalanche principle, um, and which was fueled by, by the existence of, uh, of this large deviation type estimate. So the question that we, we, we looked at, and this was actually also motivated by another work of Wilhelm. Um, was whether this type of approach can be made modular and applied in other instances for other types of base dynamics. And uh, we managed to, to, to find the formulation of such an abstract, uh, abstract result that, that uh, relates the two. The result, it's, it's, it's general and it's for any dimension, uh, for co-cycles of any dimension, but it's much more complicated, difficult to formulate it in higher dimensions. So let me just uh, perhaps end with, uh, with this describe. This is a special case. This is a special case, exactly, yes. So, so that statement is, is, is abstract. And uh, um, we try to prove, one reason we try to prove these types of uniform large deviations is because we want to conclude that the Lyapunov exponents behave uh, continuously with the modulus of continuity. Uh, so basically, we, we, we change a difficult problem for another difficult problem, but it's of a different nature. Um, so so let, me, let me formulate that abstract uh, result, but in the SL2R setting, because it's just technically simpler, but the result is, is more general. So this, general, uh, this abstract result says the following. You have a base ergodic system. And you have a metric space of uh, SL2R cycles with the following properties. So you assume that the cycles are bounded. You assume that the distance, it's the infinity distance or finer. And sometimes you need uh, some flexibility there. You, you may not want to work with the infinity distance. For instance, in the quasi-periodic setting, you have a finer distance. And uh, you assume that every co-cycle with positive Lyapunov exponent satisfies uh, uh, that kind of uniform concentration inequality. And the uniformity is the crucial ingredient and is the harder one to, to get. Well, I should qualify this. It's the hard one to get in, in um, non-generic cases, in degenerate situations like this one, where the conditions from uh, Furstenberg's theory, for instance, are not satisfied. They are also hard to get in the quasi-periodic setting, where you leave the Schrodinger uh, co-cycles um, world, and you have uh, you have a co-cycle whose uh, determinant is say ad identically zero. That's also a degenerate situation that it's it's hard to to get. And we had a, a work on this. Um, okay, so. Under these assumptions, the Lyapunov exponent, the maximum Lyapunov exponent is, is a continuous function everywhere. And whenever this uh, condition is satisfied, that the, the, remember this is the SL2R setting. So saying that the, it's positive, the maximum Lyapunov exponent is equivalent in other settings to saying that it's simple. Right? It's, uh, it's separated from the next one. Then, the, then locally, you have. Um, 
a modulus of continuity. And the modulus of continuity depends on how well you did in your uh, estimate in the I erased, uh, here in the in the large deviation estimate. If you, if you got an exponential decay, you get Hölder continuity. If you have sub exponential, you get some weak Hölder. We call. Okay, this is this is the um, this is the abstract uh, result. Then the question is perhaps what happens when the Lyapunov exponent is zero? Do you have a modulus of continuity? And then it depends. It depends on your model. So in the quasi-periodic setting, um, there are various results that the modulus of continuity can be good. But in the, in the random setting, um, there are examples. So how should I? On one hand, there is this work of Viana with all where they get some modulus of continuity, at least a certain minimum modulus of continuity. Uh, but in work of Duarte, of myself, and Manuel Santos, we show that uh, we have examples where if the Lyapunov exponent is zero, the modulus of continuity is much weaker than weak holder. It can deteriorate quite badly. So it really depends on this, this, this condition here. It, uh, what happens with the modulus of continuity is a matter of the um, of the base dynamic, I, I, I guess, to some extent. Um, OK, so perhaps to, to, to end, uh, I would like to, well, just summarize that, that the goal is, as I said, to, um, to find methods to prove these types of statistical properties for more general uh, um, uh, dynamical systems, um, linear cycles of a more general dynamical systems, um, and with the goal, with one, with one, one consequence of this would be that this would also um, lead to an understanding of the regularity properties of the associated Lyapunov exponents. This is a, this is one, one uh, consequence of it. Besides this being, I think, uh, a natural question. Um, Unfortunately, there aren't so many methods available. Um, we are still struggling with the Bernoulli-Markov uh, case, at least if you leave the two dimension two, uh, there's not much done, if anything. So I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs>